On August 15, 1977, a single 72-second burst at 1,420 MHz changed SETI history. An unexplained signal annotated WOW by Jerry Amon and never heard again. Officially, it was an unsolved fluke. But now, Avi Loeb claims that today's interstellar comet 3i Atlas occupied that exact sky position on the very same night, with orbital math putting its odds of coincidence at less than 1%. If a 2 gigawatt signal did come from 600 astronomical units away, what kind of intelligence or technology could have sent it? The assertion is bold, the evidence strange, and the stakes enormous. Are we finally confronting the hidden truth behind the WOW signal, or just pulling at a cosmic thread that will unravel everything we thought we knew? Big Ears Receiver Array swept the sky on August 15, 1977, logging a 72-second spike at 1,420 MHz. The frequency of neutral hydrogen, the most abundant element in the universe, and a natural target for SETI searches. The signal, captured in a string of digits and letters, 6EQUJ5, stood out against the usual background noise, peaking at a signal-to-noise ratio near 30 to 1. The printout, later annotated with a red WOW by astronomer Jerry Eamon, became an instant icon. The event's coordinates, right ascension 19 hours 25 minutes and declination minus 27 degrees, pointed towards Sagittarius, a crowded region near the galactic plane. Big Ear's design allowed for only a narrow slice of sky at a time, and the signal occupied a single beam as Earth's rotation carried the telescope's field of view across the source. The match between the signal's duration, just over a minute, and the expected transit time for a fixed point source through the beam was exact. No corresponding signal appeared in the second beam, ruling out most terrestrial interference. Frequency analysis pinned the burst at 1,420.456 MHz, just above the hydrogen line, with an offset of about 50 kHz. While this is sometimes cited as a possible Doppler blue shift, the channel bandwidth and lack of high-resolution spectral data leave the true velocity ambiguous. The equipment's channelization set the limits. 50 channels, each 10 kHz wide, with the WOW burst peaking in two adjacent bins. No raw intermediate frequency or analog to digital records survive, only the digitized summary preserved in print and later scans. Follow-up scans of the same coordinates yielded nothing. The sky remained silent. Aman and the Big Ear team combed through every available log, cross-checking for known satellites, aircraft, or local radio interference. No explanation held. The event's singularity, never repeated, never explained, became the defining mystery of SETI's archival record. The WOW signal's data, frozen in those columns of numbers, remain the baseline for every probability calculation and orbital hypothesis that followed. Avi Loeb's calculations begin with a simple question. What are the odds that 3i slash Atlas, an interstellar object discovered in 2025, just happened to line up with the WOW signal's patch of sky on the same night in 1977. To answer, Loeb's team ran the orbit of 3i slash Atlas backward, nearly 50 years. The result, on August 15, 1977, the object would have been about 600 astronomical units from Earth, near right ascension 19 hours 40 minutes and declination minus 19 degrees. The WOW signal itself was logged at right ascension 19 hours 25 minutes, declination minus 27. On a sky map that's a modest offset, but in astronomical terms, it's close enough to raise eyebrows. Loeb frames the probability of this overlap as less than 1%, a coin flip coming up heads seven times in a row. Not impossible, but rare. The calculation compares the sky area swept by a random interstellar object to the WOW signal's error box, factoring in the vastness of the celestial sphere. The sensitivity is stark. Shift the coordinates by just a degree, and the odds change dramatically. Loeb's critics point out that orbital uncertainties and beam geometry could widen or shrink the match, but the raw figure remains, under 1% by his estimate. Translating the WOW signal's intensity into transmitter power, Loeb uses the detected flux of 54 to 212 Janskys at Earth. At a distance of 600 astronomical units, 
That requires a transmitter output between half a gigawatt and two gigawatts, depending on assumptions, comparable to the output of a large nuclear power plant. This isn't a backyard beacon. It's industrial scale, but not beyond known technology. The numbers, Loeb argues, stack up to a coincidence that deserves attention. Most astronomers remain skeptical, warning that rare alignments do happen in a universe this large. But the combination of orbital overlap and required transmitter power is enough to keep the debate alive and to drive new searches for signals from 3 i atlas as it passes through the inner solar system. For Loeb, the real test is whether future observations will deliver a repeat or leave the wow signal as a one-off enigma. Trajectory maps for 3 i atlas Sketch a path that defies expectation. Instead of plunging through the solar system at a steep angle, as most interstellar visitors do, Atlas threads the ecliptic, the same flat plane traced by Earth and its neighbors, its inclination just five degrees off-level. For a body arriving from deep space, this is a rare alignment. Dynamicists at the Minor Planet Center have run the numbers. Out of the infinite directions an object could take, only about one in 500 would land this close to the solar system's disk. The geometry is relentless. Most comets and asteroids, local or foreign, tilt and twist through space, shaped by ancient collisions and planetary pulls. Atlas glides almost parallel to the planetary corridor, following a route more typical of homegrown bodies than cosmic drifters. The improbability compounds as the timeline tightens. Over the span of a few weeks, Atlas strings together a series of planetary near misses. On October 3rd, it will sweep within 29 million kilometers of Mars, a margin that, by interplanetary standards, counts as a near miss. Not long after, the orbit brings it within striking distance of both Venus and Jupiter, stacking a run of close approaches that orbital statisticians are quick to flag. For a random interstellar object, the odds of threading this multi-planet gauntlet are vanishingly low. Models from the JPL solar system. Dynamics Group estimate the compounded probability at less than 1 in 20,000. These are not the numbers that arise by chance in a sky filled with billions of possibilities. Statisticians brought in to audit the scenario point out the difference between rare and impossible. In a universe this vast, low probability events do happen. Yet when so many alignments stack up, ecliptic hugging inclination, a parade of planetary close passes, all within a single inbound trajectory, the pattern stands out. To visualize the odds, imagine shuffling a deck of cards and pulling out the ace of spades five times in a row. Not impossible, but enough to make even a seasoned card player pause. Simulations run on supercomputers at the Harvard-Smithsonian Center for Astrophysics trace thousands of hypothetical interstellar visitors through the solar system. The vast majority slice through at steep angles, missing planets by tens or hundreds of millions of kilometers, never aligning with the ecliptic, never repeating the atlas pattern. Only a handful, in millions of runs, replicate anything close to this geometry. The data points are clear. Atlas is not following the script written by population statistics or random sampling. For now, the orbit stands as a statistical outlier. The rarity of the trajectory, the timing of the planetary flybys, and the low inclination all combine to set Atlas apart from the background noise of cosmic wanderers. Whether this pattern is a product of unknown natural processes or something else entirely remains an open question. But for the teams tracking Atlas, the numbers alone are enough to justify a second look. The first images of 3i slash Atlas forced analysts to rethink the playbook. Instead of a classic comet tail trailing away from the sun, a concentrated glow appeared on the forward sunward side, a feature observers called an anti-tail. This brightness, aligned almost head-on, resisted every correction for image smear or instrumental artifact. Imaging teams at Gemini South and the VLT compared notes. A forward-facing structure should be rare, unless the nucleus is either not spinning, tidally locked, or actively maintaining orientation. For a natural object, such stability is unusual. Some argued for geometry, others for a controlled or at least non-random surface state. Momentum accounting deepened the puzzle. As the comet neared the inner solar system, gas production climbed to about 150 kilograms per second. 
This is a robust outflow, enough to strip away over 12,000 tons per day. In comet science, this kind of mass loss acts like a rocket. Jets of gas push the nucleus, nudging its orbit off the path predicted by pure gravity. For typical comets, even modest activity leaves a fingerprint in the astrometric record. A slow drift, a subtle curve away from Newtonian expectation. But dynamical modelers tracking 3i slash Atlas found no such deviation. The orbit stuck to the gravitational script with uncanny precision. Monte Carlo simulations swept through every plausible combination of nucleus size and density. For anything smaller than about 5 kilometers across, the math broke down. Atlas should have veered off course long ago. The only way to balance the books? Assign the nucleus a mass of at least 33 billion tons, likely more. That figure anchors Atlas in the record books as the most massive interstellar object ever detected, by orders of magnitude. Spectroscopists turned to chemistry for answers. Early spectra, though still awaiting peer-reviewed publication, circulated among research teams. The preliminary reports pointed to an atmosphere dominated by carbon dioxide, possibly as high as 95%, while water vapor, the staple of most solar system comets, barely registered above 5%. Such a ratio is not just rare, it's almost unheard of in local comet science, a steep rise in cyanide emissions and a pronounced green coma added to the list of oddities. But the real debate ignited around the metal lines. Neutral nickel appeared in emission, while iron lines remained stubbornly absent. In natural comets, nickel and iron travel together, forged in similar proportions in stellar furnaces. The absence of iron, paired with a strong nickel signature, raised speculative talk of nickel carbonyl, a compound more familiar to industrial chemists than planetary scientists. One spectroscopist described the profile as processed, an echo of manufactured material, though others cautioned that rare natural chemistry could not be ruled out. The nickel emission itself appeared to fade with solar distance, following an R to the ninth power decay, an abnormally steep drop-off that standard comet models struggle to explain. Some proposed that only a thin, volatile rich veneer was being stripped, exposing deeper layers as Atlas drew closer to the sun. Others wondered if selective outgassing or engineered release could produce such a curve. The debate remains unresolved, but the anomaly stack grows taller with each observation. For now, the dossier is incomplete. Imaging analysts, dynamical modelers, and spectroscopists all face contradictions that natural comet models struggle to reconcile. Whether these paradoxes will dissolve with better data or deepen with new findings depends on the next round of observations. Every anomaly adds weight to the argument that Atlas is not just another icy wanderer. The question hanging over the field, are these signals of nature's extremes or hints of something engineered? October 3rd, 2025 is circled in every mission planner's calendar. On that day, 3i slash Atlas sweeps past Mars at a distance of 29 million kilometers, a margin that, for planetary science, offers a fleeting but critical window. Mars orbiters, including NASA's MRO and ESA's Trace Gas Orbiter, are tasked with a challenge. Capture high-resolution images of an object barely 5 to 7 kilometers wide, moving against the backdrop of deep space. The technical teams run simulations, factoring in the angular size, less than a hundredth of a pixel even for the sharpest cameras. HiRISE, the most powerful imager at Mars, resolves just 0.3 meters per pixel at close range, but at this distance, 3i slash Atlas shrinks to invisibility. The planners know this, yet the opportunity is too rare to ignore. For ground controllers, the calculus is about more than just resolution. Tracking a fast-moving dim target from orbit requires precise ephemeris data and split-second timing. Any detection, even as a faint point source, could constrain the object's position, velocity, or unexpected activity, jets, fragmentation, or precursor debris. The imaging window lasts only hours. Data downlink schedules are cleared and real-time vetting teams are on standby to process whatever returns. Meanwhile, proposals circulate for more ambitious retargets. Juno, currently looping through Jupiter's magnetosphere, is flagged as a potential asset for a March 2026 intercept should its trajectory and fuel budget allow. 
Mission Engineers Weigh the Risks Juno's camera suite, designed for auroral and atmospheric imaging, lacks the sensitivity to resolve a small, distant interstellar object. ESA's JUICE and NASA's Europa Clipper face similar limits. At 29 million kilometers, their best cameras would see a nucleus smaller than a thirtieth of a pixel, and any coma or jets would blur into noise. The operational verdict is blunt. No current spacecraft can deliver resolved imagery at this range. Attention shifts to the Galileo project and ground-based telescopes. Adaptive optics arrays and rapid response photometry offer the best shot at detecting outbursts or directional jets, especially if coordinated with the Mars flyby. The criteria are strict. A meaningful detection would show symmetry, jets aligned with the orbital axis, or evidence of structured fragments, clues that could distinguish a natural comet from something engineered. For now, the focus is on collecting every possible photon before the object slips further from reach. The October 3rd window is narrow, the technical odds are long, but the potential payoff, a direct glimpse at the most massive interstellar visitor on record, keeps every console lit through the night. October 29th draws a hard line across the calendar. On that day, 3i slash Atlas disappears behind the sun, lost in the glare, beyond the reach of every Earth-based telescope. The blackout is absolute. Even space telescopes, Hubble and JWST, are forced to wait. Their safety protocols lock out any attempt to observe so close to the solar furnace. The practical result is a silence that stretches from late October into early December, a gap precisely when the story reaches its most critical point. Propulsion specialists weigh in with calculations that have become central to the debate. If 3i slash Atlas were to perform a maneuver during this solar conjunction, the timing couldn't be better. The reverse Oberth effect, a principle known to every interplanetary mission designer, allows for a massive change in velocity, 30 to 40 kilometers per second. In theory, if a burn is executed at perihelion, the closest approach to the sun. For a natural comet, such a maneuver is out of reach. For a probe, the blackout provides perfect cover. No instrument on or near Earth can track a trajectory change in real time. Only after the object re-emerges, weeks later, can its orbit be re-measured and any deviation detected. The decisive test comes in late November or December, when dynamicists will fit the new trajectory to every available observation. A match to the pre-blackout path would favor natural explanations. Any significant deviation, especially one requiring a high delta V, would force a reconsideration of every prior assumption. SETI directors and risk analysts now frame the situation as a yellow alert scenario. The stakes are clear. If Atlas emerges on a shifted orbit, the case for artificial intervention strengthens. If it resumes its predicted path, the anomaly stack shrinks and the weight returns to rare but natural processes. Data release protocols are already in place. Observatory teams have pledged to share positional updates in real time, minimizing the risk of rumor or misinterpretation. For now, the scientific community waits, instruments idle, as the object passes through its period of maximum uncertainty. The outcome, confirmation or refutation, will define the narrative for years to come. Yet, no direct evidence links 3i slash Atlas to an artificial origin, and many observations remain unverified or classified. As missions prepare for the October 3rd Mars flyby and the October 29th solar occultation, the testable claims stand clear. Forthcoming data will determine if this is a unique comet or something unprecedented. For now, the WOW signal and 3i slash Atlas remain an open scientific question, grounded in numbers and awaiting answers.